All right, so just call to order our select board meeting for July 10th, 2019. Uh, just go right into the consent agenda here. First thing is several warrants. We have warrants AP1951, AP1951-2, AP1951-S, AP1952, AP1952-S, AP2001, AP2001-2, PR1949, and PR2001. We have our warrants, or our minutes from March 20th, 2019. Uh, we have a Hadley Police Department uh, appointments, which I can hold uh, until after the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. We have a contract draft approval for the fire chief. Uh, we have a landlord lien waiver for Action Ambulance EMS. We have surplus property to sell, a safe, and a Council on Aging van. Uh, we have a cemetery mowing IFB award, uh, which we have identified GTC Landscaping to award the bid to. And we have a proclamation from Merle Buckout, which I'll hold into the end, and I can read that. I don't know if anyone's here for that. She's she is not here. That was presented to her at an event last night on your behalf. Okay. Do we do we want to read that, or do we want to just uh, we could read it. We'll read yeah, it. Yeah. I was. Okay. Thinking, yes. We'll read that. I, I, so I see a lot of things here that need to be pulled out. Almost all of it. Okay. What do you want to pull out? fire department, the chief, uh, police department, the ambulance contract, um, I don't know, I guess we could do the surplus property, and we're going to read the proclamation, so there's okay. only a couple. So how about the <laughs> warrants oh, the and warrants. the minutes? Yeah, that sounds good. Motion to approve. <laughs> All right. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Chief, if you want to do the appointments, we can start there. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, seated in the back over here, you'll see four fine gentlemen. Um, we have two sets of appointments. We have three uh, individuals here who we would like to present to be hired as special police officers uh, to replenish our special pool, which, as you know, we would like to hire from within for full time. And then we have one individual here who is currently in the special pool who we'd like to promote to our full-time ranks. So all the way on the end, you see, you'll have, you have uh, Tenzin Kenrap, and well, then next to him you have Anthony Liberto, and then all the way over here on this end you have Brendan Smith. He has been working for Loomis Armored Car since 2014. And then on the end over here is Brendan Smith. Brendan resides here in Hadley, and he graduated high school on Prince Edward Island, Canada, and is currently working on his associate's degree in Green at Greenfield Community College. Uh, Brendan completed his Reserve Police Academy training in 2018, and has been working for the Goshen Police Department as a reserve officer since February of this year. Uh, he has also worked as a carpenter for Bromucci Construction right here in Hadley and has volunteered for Safe Passage as a call taker on their domestic violence crisis line. Uh, each of these officers do have aspirations, as you know, uh, to become full-time police officers here in the town of Hadley and they have the necessary qualifications to begin our field training process immediately. So based upon that, I would recommend that all three of these individuals be appointed as special police officers for the town of Hadley. I'll make that motion for these fine <coughs> gentlemen to be appointed to our special police officers. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. 
So before they all get up and do everything, uh, we have one more, uh, Jake Marini. Hi. You probably recognize Jake, he works for us now. Uh, Jake resides in East Long Meadow and he has been with us since October of last year. He previously worked as a police officer at Western New England College since 2016, where because of his efforts and his knowledge as a police officer, he was made a field training officer uh, not long after he started. Uh, he has also earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Wenick. Uh, his maturity showed almost immediately but he has already received high praise from his co-workers and from citizens alike. Uh, Jake knew that we had some vacancies to be filled and potentially a new position so that we could create our full-time school resource officer. So wanting to show his dedication, he left his job at Western New England College and committed to us on a full-time basis. Uh, that's, that, should be, uh, that should be noted. That's, that's a very risky, risky move for him to show his dedication to us. For the last several we weeks, Jake has worked any and every possible open shift and has shown that he wants to be a Hadley police officer. For these reasons, I would recommend him to be appointed as a full-time police officer for the town of Hadley. Great. I'll make a motion for Jake to become our full-time police officer. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. contract for the next three years. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I didn't even know you were back there. <laughs> You're hiding. See, the old lady sees everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hiding behind those officers. Uh, so we have the landlord lien waiver. Was that one we wanted to pull? Yes. So the story here is that Action Ambulance is changing banks. And so the uh, bank wants to uh, get a document signed by the landlord since we are housing the ambulance and the operations and, and municipal property. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, I had Joel Bard, our attorney, review this. He gave it a clean bill of health. This is a routine matter. Um, and so I put it on the consent agenda for your signature. Okay. I would just like to make of note, too, um, it certainly is a good investment. I don't think we have anything to worry about. I think the ambulance has done an excellent job in our town in response 
um, it actually has made us money and I think at some, <coughs> some point we'll be able to bring back uh, further details on that on uh, how we're doing that way. Mm -hmm. so I'll make Great. a motion to sign the landlord. landlord lien waiver for action <coughs> ambulance. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have a surplus property sale of a safe and council on aging van. Uh, the so safe is one we've talked about. It's down at DPW. That came from here. Is that the one that came from here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the council on aging van, we received the new van. Uh, so the old van is now surplus property. Is there anything, if any, use to us with that van that would be of any value to us? No. Okay. No, we tried that with one of the school vans. Yeah. And of course, when you need it, that's when we have the most problems with the van. Mm -hmm. So, uh, maintenance wise, it's, it's like the water department just got a trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a trailer that we had gotten with the cones and the barricades and stuff like that that the police department used. It's easier to hook up. A trailer and put a couple of tires on it every five years or six years than it is to maintain a vehicle. And then, as I said, at the time you really need it, mm -hmm. it's not running correctly or not running at all. So, yeah, and I know that was in we talked about it. this repair. Yeah. That's why we kind of needed a yeah. new one. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure that there was no need for us anywhere. We'll probably make a nice camper. <laughs> go, go for it, John. <laughs> if you want to park it in your backyard, if you don't want to go in your I'm glad my husband's not home to watch this on TV tonight. <laughs> I don't think so. We're not telling him, are we, John? <laughs> you can see it parked over there at the shop. It'll yeah, nice. great. Yeah. Maybe he'll be living in it. <laughs> yeah. His new home. Uh, all right. Uh, can we have a motion to approve that? Um, uh, where is it going to? Municipal, both of them? Or no, the, the municipal is the easiest thing. You call them up and they yeah. turn it into a pile of cash. Yeah. Yeah, because after after I had mentioned a little bit about the safe, there has been some other interest in it too now. So. Did I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so authorization. Oh, is it motion to sell the safe in the COA van? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have cemetery mowing uh, award. Right now we're recommending GTC landscaping, but we do have a list of the bids here. Like Is that somebody out. local? They're on the bill shoot up. Mm -hmm. How did their bid compare to um, past cost for maintaining the cemeteries? Uh, we, uh, it looks like we have just enough money to, to make this contract. So um, it was a difficult uh, contract uh, or bid to evaluate because there were mowing prices and some were higher and some were lower and then there were seasonal cleanup and some were higher and some were lower and weren't the same people. So, uh, But the, the, the total value of the contract is very clear that the low bidder is GTC landscaping out of Belchertown. Uh, we checked their references, they came back very positive, uh, so according to the rules of the, of the land, we have to give it to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Okay. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm going to abstain from that one. Okay. Uh, and then we just have a quick <laughs> proclamation to read for Merle Buckout. Um, so this is... Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Havie, by the Select Board Proclamation 2019. Whereas Merle Buckout joined the Mount Holyoke Range Advisory Committee on November 20th, 1984. And whereas Merle Buckout represented the Town of Havie for 35 years on Range Advisory Committee. And whereas Merle Buckout also served 17 years on the Hadley Cemetery Committee as the Hockenham Cemetery Representative. And whereas Merle Buckout has earned the respect and affection of family, friends, and residents of the town of Hadley. Now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, do hereby deem it an honor and pleasure to extend this proclamation to Merle Buckout for recognition of 35 years of volunteer service to the town of Hadley with sincere congratulations and thanks.
given this, it's dated the 9th day of July because this was presented yesterday in the year of 2019. Congratulations, Mark. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, and we have a opening now for public comment. Nothing on here is. Well, I'll be quick, and I'm really just here um, on behalf of Andrea Stanley and myself, who organized the Hadley Common Beer and Cider Garden, which had its final day last Friday, four uh, Fridays in a row, sun every every day, and um, it was from from our uh, angle and from a lot of emails and people talking to us during and after and around town, a huge success. I feel like it really brought community together. I met neighbors that live really close to me that I've never met before, which was wonderful, and people um, that I um, looked forward to seeing each week because I came back. Um, but really, I'm here to thank the town um, for making it not just easy, uh, through all the processes and the help that we got, but like fun, and it made us feel very connected. And um, and I don't think we could have done it without the help of Fire Chief in particular, who um, showed up and made sure that our energy was flowing, so the music could happen and the lights could twinkle, and um, the folks on detail, the police and fire department. Um, who came with smiles on their face, willingness to help, and it just felt like a real community collaboration. Um, and uh, yeah, and I hope that if there are any questions about it or concerns or anything that we can talk about that. Overall, I think that it just went too long. 3.30 is too early to start, but other than that, I'd say <laughs> five to nine next year. We'll decide to do it again. Um, maybe a few different vendors rotating in to get more people in the community involved, keeping it still um, totally focused on Hadley agriculture and business. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. That's great. Anyone else? Okay, so. Well, before we begin, uh, it's important that we be broadcasting, and I'm getting messages that we're not broadcasting. <clears throat> um, yes, let, uh, well, I'm going to check out something across the street to, to that effect, so. Okay, we could, we can wait on, if you guys don't mind, we'll just wait on that for right now and go to some other items and then come back, is that okay? Bond issue. The bond issue, because we have to wait for, yeah. I just want to wait for the bond wrong. issue, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, let's do... Since I see Alan back there, let's do the Chapter 61A, Notice of Intent to Convert to Other Use. Um, this is our right of first refusal for some land on Aquavita Road. Um, we are recommending that we waive the right of first refusal for the 120-day waiting period in which the town may exercise their right of first refusal. I don't know, David, if you want to say anything else or we want to make a motion. Yes. This is a parcel that we looked at previously for a possible acquisition for the town. Uh, it became very clear that, um, that uh, the town was not interested, uh, particularly the funding source was not interested. So at this point, there's uh, no reason for us not to uh, uh, grant the, uh, the waiver of first refusal. I'll make a motion to waive the right of first refusal for the former Sandy Beach location uh, for the 61A. I'll second that. <coughs> John, did you do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All the, uh, well, any further discussion about this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That was easy, Al. Easy enough. Okay. <laughs> Too easy, yeah. <laughs> do you want us to uh, sign it? Yeah. Sign it? Sure. Do we want to do this? <laughs> Oh, you got it. I don't know if we have two copies there. I have another one here if you need. I think I already signed it. I knew we would, so I did it. Ahead of time. <laughs> That's legal. Jennifer, it's just that one page. 
Yeah, just that one page there. Do you want to just make a copy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then we have a request for a slow down for children's sign. Uh, it looks like a resident requests a sign on Rocky Hill Road advising motorists to reduce speed due to children. The chief of police has reviewed and supports this. Motion to approve. Second. What's what part of yeah, further Rocky discussion? Hill Road is it? Yeah, do we know where it's going? <clears throat> Approximately. Does any you know? Did you hear anything about it, Mike? No. no. Uh, it's, it's a sign fan it's slow down. Just yeah. Slow down, children. I mean, yeah. Uh, I children think slow down. Could could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not a sign that says speed up for children, no. so that's good. At least it's going the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I'd like some more information on it. I know, yeah. I mean, are you going to put one every thousand feet on the Rocky Hill Road? One, one sign. One sign. You have one sign. The police of chief, of police, the chief of police has reviewed and supports it. Well, because there's two ways on Rocky Hill, so I think you would put I think you had a little beer before, before you came. No, I didn't. I don't know what's happening. The heat's getting to me. I think you would put a sign both ways on Rocky Hill Road because if the children are playing in a road, they could get hit either way. Yeah. <laughs> it's only the people coming from UMass that's been <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if I lived on Rocky Hill Road, I would be letting my kids out on yeah. Rocky yeah. Hill Road. Are we all set, John? Yeah, oh, we're good. Okay, yep. great. Perfect. Yes, Perfect timing. We're on TV. Okay. Uh, so we will move into meeting with the Chief Financial Advisor for bond authorization. Where'd uh, David go? With the Finance Committee. Are you leaving? I, why? I just had one question before you go. Was there anything at the meeting yesterday morning? It was this morning. It was this morning with the subfire station. Nothing no, special. Nothing special. Okay. That's all I want. Thank you. We're on the air. We are on the air, David. Okay. And we are going to get started. So, uh, the Town of Hadley Chief Financial Advisor David Eisenthal, Unibank, and Town Treasurer's Linda Sanderson will present the results of bond bidding for the most recent bond authorization. Do you guys want to take it from here? Should or? we start with the bond rating? Yeah, I yeah. First. I think yeah. David should announce it. <laughs> uh, so uh, we um, we met for four hours with S and P uh, Global a couple of Fridays back, and uh, we uh, presented all the information that we could think of that was relevant to uh, credit rating. Uh, that included the character of the town, certainly our finances, a bit about our history. We took a bus tour to show the sites, our relationships with, uh, with uh, important institutions such as the University of Massachusetts. Uh, and in particular, they focused in on our OPEP strategy. It seemed like that caught a lot of their attention, and we talked about how we're managing our unfunded liabilities. And with, plans, policies, procedures, uh, practices for handling uh, finances for the town. And uh, as a result, they gave us an upgrade from a double A plus to a triple A. That is the highest credit rating available. So uh, this is very good for the town of Hadley. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of hard work into making this happen. But everybody deserves credit. The select board by your leadership, the department heads by their professionalism, their professional knowledge, their work ethic, uh, their contributions. We have a lot of good people who know their job uh, and they perform it well every single day. Linda Sanderson did an incredible amount of work and David Eisenthal helped guide us through the whole process, particularly when we had questions because this is some, these are waters where we don't swim very often and you do. Uh, so it's a good day for the community, good day for us. Uh, and so I'm going to allow you to talk about the results of the bidding on the bonds. And I just want to say thank you all for your hard work doing that. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, I was confident we were going to get the AAA rating, but I know it was you stacked were. against us. <laughs> I tried to will it into happening, but uh, I, I, you know, you guys did a lot. It went really the extra mile to 
get us over that line. And I mean, that's, I think it's going to be great. And as in the bond uh, you'll present later, you know, the interest rates are much better than what we were expecting and, and budgeting. So, you know, thank from the taxpayers, thank you, because that will and be saving us money every year. the finance committee, who are very important to our whole budget process and the contributions that you provide and the lively debate that you offer on a lot of topics. <laughs> uh, you're, you're very much partners in all of this, and you each deserve credit for your contributions. We should tell them the first thing he said, the, that the uh, uh, examiner said as he looked around the room, and he said, I, I feel like I know you. I watched your town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and we're all kind of like, uh. <laughs> So when he saw anyone who went to the mic and, and spoke about the budget, presented any of the articles that night, so right off the bat, he's saying how our community obviously works well together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we know we, he, he watched right to the end, honestly, uh, right to through to the, um, to the flag and the marijuana articles of the whole thing. <laughs> so it was, it was an interesting way to start. And I, I thought it was interesting to hear an outsider's perspective on how well our town meeting runs, even as people uh, argue and have difference of opinion, whether it's on finances or another area that, that it does work well. I think it's, we sometimes forget that as we're always struggling over some, one issue or another at our various meetings that on balance, we actually do work well together. We get good results. We're a fiscally conservative town. We have to be <laughs> because that's what the people want. And um, we're, I think, fiscally um, yep, conservative and we make and wise. I think we make good decisions. I think we're responsible. I think that having been on boards for several years now myself and how much the total financial team in this town has worked for the size of our town and how well that it works together and how we've gone from A to double A to now triple A and double A plus. I mean, we kind of just moved it along and tried to find things that um, improved our town and how we took responsibility for it with the OPEP. And when you go to meetings outside or you go to the MMA meeting and you find that no towns around us are not hardly any in the state of Massachusetts have even thought about putting any money into OPEB that, you know, um, taking the bull by the horns as we did, you know, several years ago, it came with resistance because it was a big chunk of money that we were going to have to start off with mm -hmm. each year to put in there and where were we going to find that and you all right. on our financial team, you know, worked us all through that. So thank you to everybody that did that. We really appreciate it and very proud to be Hadley. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're very happy with how that went. So, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I can sort of add a little color to that. I mean, yeah. I think with the upgrade, there really were three areas that S&P focused on. I think the very strong financial reserves uh, uh, at the end of fiscal year 18, uh, reserves total 16 percent of general fund <coughs> expenditures, and that's considered by S&P to be very strong. Uh, I think management and policies and practices were crucial here, and particularly OPEB. I think it was the OPEB policies, in fact, that put the town over the top. Um, and then the economy, uh, strong tax base. I mean, you've got a billion dollars of uh, valuation with a population of over 5,000. Those are very strong numbers. Um, participation in a broad and diverse economy, the Springfield uh, SMSA, that's considered to be a plus. They did express one concern that they'll be watching, and that is that the Springfield area economy is in, is in fact, they're seeing signs of some deterioration, which they're going to be watching. Um, my feeling is that um, it would take quite a bit of deterioration for that to affect this newly assigned rating, but it's something to be aware of, and mm -hmm. they did bring this up. So. Um, Yes, and, and I've worked with the town long enough to remember the single A's uh, in the 90s. Uh, the town had Moody's ratings um, from back in the day to up to uh, about 10 years ago. Um, the, you know, the A, the A rating was until throughout the 90s until 97, A2 in 1997 and then AA3 in 2010, and actually the town retired all of its Moody's rated bonds probably about seven or eight years ago. Um, town first had a, uh, an S&P rating in 2002, A+, uh, upgraded to AA in 2009, 
uh, upgraded to AA plus in 2014. So uh, that's a nice march upward. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you want to have us talk about the bond issue itself. I think it would be good to just at least summarize the bond issue, go through it a little bit. Yeah, I think okay. Yeah, under the Massachusetts general laws, um, it is the treasurer, Linda Sanderson, who borrows on behalf of the town with the approval of the select board. And so what you're doing, what we're doing now is observing the law with respect to executing and borrowing. And um, the bonds that you have before you will finance uh, about $8.15 million worth of capital costs, uh, about $4.8 million for the senior center, 2.3 million for the fire substation, 540,000 for school renovations, uh, about 393,000 for land acquisition, and 121,000 for the stormwater upgrade. The principal amount is actually less. It's 7,780,000. The difference between the capital costs and the principal amount is being funded by what is called bond premium. The town will pay the 7,780,000 in principal annually on the January 15th for 29 years beginning in 2021 and ending in 2049. And the town will pay interest semi-annually beginning January 15th of 2020. Uh, the town released a disclosure document on the 27th of, it was dated the 27th of June, took bids on Monday, received eight bids with the, uh, which ranged all from 2.72% to 2.93%. The winning bid was from R.W. Baird uh, out of their Milwaukee, Wisconsin office. Uh, the bonds will settle a week from today, Wednesday the 17th, and the town will pay off approximately $4.8 million worth of notes on next Thursday the 18th. That is a quick summary. Mm -hmm. And you should have a vote in front of you. Yeah. That for your consideration to um, authorize the award and execution of the, of the bond issue. Okay. Um, before we make the motion, do you guys <coughs> have any questions or any other information you want to ask about? And make the motion. But. No, I thought it was a, a great experience to listen to everything. Um, and it's very interesting to listen to David uh, talk about uh, how the bond ratings work and, and, and purchasing the bond itself. So I, I think it's been done a great job. So questions? Great. Okay. Um, I'd like to move that the select board authorize the bonds as referenced in the documentation contained in the board docs agenda and available for inspection in the treasurer's office. Second. Okay, and just wanted to make that statement because there's three pages of uh, motion to make and it, it would be quite lengthy to go through. Um, is there any further discussion? Not really. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we just have to take a minute to sign yeah, more than a minute. <laughs> all the documentation and I believe we have to do it on camera. Um, so, do we have the documentation here? We do. Okay. Uh, so, I'm sorry for everyone viewing, but we're just going to sign these real yeah, quickly. This is important that um, it be on camera, so we have to do on this on camera. Um, what we have here are, are actually 21 individual bonds. There's one for each year of payment, and you sign each, each of those at the tab. And then uh, Jessica will then seal it as town clerk afterwards. Those are the bonds. There are three other certificates. One is the signature um, no litigation and official statement certificate. One is a tax certificate. And one is the cont continuing disclosure certificate. So. Um, there aren't a, each of those. There's four copies in which each of you will sign those folders. Okay. So I don't know. We want to go in sure, the same direction. Just... And lastly is the certificate of vote, which just you sign um, all four of those as clerk, David. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. 
some, some soundtrack music. Yeah. <laughs> Heaven, there is no fear. <laughs> That's why we drink it here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for all your help. We're just, I'm just passing down. They might be out of order. Boy, I'm stacking one on each document. One, one per document, correct? I think. One per document. Yeah. What is it? Like Google Drive. Add backups. These are all signed. It might be slightly out of order though, when we're passing it down. Well, one of the things I do before I send the documents on the door is I make sure everything is okay. signed, sealed, and in order. Yes. We will check them, and if anyone's missed. We'll find you. Right? Yeah. Find you. Where do you live? Where do you work? <laughs> David will text in. I'm up in a plane. For Kestrel? Yeah. Oh. So I told her that Paul Gagnon said we couldn't do it, so I didn't have to put them up. Oh, yeah. But we've got them lined up for another meeting. Okay. I feel bad. Down the home stretch. Yep. That's just the first folder. <laughs> <laughs> them to yeah. get into the other one. So just one per. And I think um, oh yeah, the town clerk says. I hope Molly is watching the it's entire all good news. thing here. <laughs> this part. YouTubing. <laughs> These were 
This is going to go in, in that this folder. folder. Yep. Okay. The blue folder. <clears throat> John didn't have such a long name, it would be done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to alphabet here. I got <laughs> Can we just do John Wash? <laughs> you need one of those signatures. Selling the, the COA van. I don't know if you realize that we, the new one came in just in time for us to take the tour. Oh, yeah. With the standard. When I was leaving, uh, the, at the, when it was at the public safety there, uh, Mitch, Mitch Cook was driving it, right? He, yes. he was driving it yes, over. Yes, he was. I mean, that really was a, a group effort. Is that it? Suzanne worked extra hard to make sure we had the, the van there. Uh, it was supposed to come in a little bit later, but we pushed on that. I was on school committee then. <laughs> we didn't have to sign them <laughs> 30 years thankful, ago. Thankful for that. Yeah. That's only up to about 35 years ago. Yeah. And so that means you've been oh. doing this a long time, David. Well, actually, I had a client who, uh, actually, I'm all in the book entry era. I don't know, if it, but I had a client who hadn't been much longer than when I was starting, but uh, he had to sit for six hours. The treasurer of the community had to sit and sign. Wow. Six hours. <laughs> Not something you missed was the book entry that's for sure. started. Yeah. I'm assuming since they left the end of year transfers, we didn't miraculously finish those out for the they end of the day. They didn't show up after all, okay. so we'll catch them next week. an hour doesn't make any difference yes. money's good so yeah this has been a long time coming um, and then the next one so we will we'll continue to do the short-term borrowing with the notes over the next year and a half and then at this point we're still planning uh, that to do the balance of the seven million dollars uh, a second bond in January of 21 
Will we have any bands oh. between now and then? Mm -hmm. We will, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'll build up again. Because okay. the last borrowing which will be after we're finished with the buildings. The next round, the next bond is after the built construction is? Yes, okay. yes, yes. The, la the next bond will be to um, consolidate the bands into a bond and in the long term, yes, we won't be, okay. it won't be, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. um, January 21, I think both projects will be done. But, so yes. this might be a, a good time to remind people like, that we have already, um, these are $8 million, this is $8 million of band, but we already have some of this borrowing underway and this is all part of the plan that we put in place a few years ago um, with a set amount of, print of uh, debt payment each year that was going to stay within a certain cap. We are still within that cap. The taxes have already accommodated two years of payment on this long-term payment plan and it will continue. This does not mean we're taking on, we're taking on new debt, but we're not taking on an increase in um, in debt payments or tax rate right it now. more or less or tax seals purposes. what we've committed to yes it doesn't increase taxes or anything we owe mm -hmm. we already did it yeah. we took care of that up front because it was important to select board and those of us talking mm -hmm. about it at the time that it be an even payment schedule over time as opposed to had we waited and started the borrowing then you see a big increase and they wanted to keep it even to know to get to where uh, to get to where we needed to be to service this kind of a debt and to get there two years ago and stay there for the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. so, so, we're on schedule. Say, um, I had some questions about the interest rate versus the projections. Uh, the conservative projection that was made when the senior center and the library were being planned was 5% based on market yes. conditions at the time. Um, we're at 2.7% basically um, due to market conditions due to our S&P rating and so that saves I think it's a 2.2 million dollars in, in payments over the life of these bonds just in interest, in interest. And that's, uh, but that's and that's just on this piece of this okay. so and so we're talking about roughly on average $75,000 a year changes based on the year, but on average $75,000 uh, a year in savings versus what we had projected um, a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. So just for those at home, the reference. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which probably means we're going to fit more of our additional borrowing because we borrow, we, we uh, vote every year to take on additional debt and buy equipment and trucks and right. various things. We'll be able to fit, fit more of that within the same cap. So, we'll be so less impact on the tax rate. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. It won't go down, but it won't go up. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both. Yes. Are your hands okay? Oh, that was nothing. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think I was in grade school last night. I might have to write that much. <laughs> <laughs> trouble. Oh, was that when you had to stay in for recess? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. right on the board. I right. will not. Yeah. 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 The blackboard. Yeah. The blackboard. No, they, they gave me the industrial um, yellow line sheet. Oh, was that? Oh, uh, yes. It was fun. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very Thank you. much. And put it in order. And, okay. And so we are going to s delay the fiscal year 2009 end of year transfers until next week, I hope, when we have that information set. Sir, are you here for the mowing? It went to GTC Landscaping. Okay. okay. Just to let you know. <laughs> um, okay. And I think the next thing we have is Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Yeah, we vote on it now, Jack. You need a. You want a copy of the bids? Or? Yeah. Uh, David, can you get that? Or, I'll take care or? of it. Would you like it now? Yeah, we can just print it out. Do you want to come down with me? I yeah. don't have it on. I have to print it off. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So we are going to, I believe we gave authorization last meeting to 
sign the library contract, but we wanted to just <coughs> take our final vote to ratify it. The, ratify the public it. Meeting. Um, so can we have a motion just to <coughs> ratify Excuse the me. library construction contract? So yeah. moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then that's just that. I don't know if, since Molly is out this week, I don't know if we have any other updates on the library. The only thing I was gonna mention that I know of about the library is the, you know, obviously when that library starts construction, parking is gonna be a little bit of an issue. Um, and I don't know if municipal building committee or anything would have any kind of input we were talking about putting a lot in over near the russell school i and did see where they're going to speak about that <coughs> excuse me they at are. their next meeting they are okay mm -hmm. because maybe there's something we can do with this project where if we've got to prep a parking lot for the contractors is there something they, we can do? They changed it. They changed it to, to a Tuesday night, and I oh, have okay. a sub fire station committee meeting on Tuesday night. Okay. So if it mine finishes, we start at five with the financial financial part of it. Okay. And then five thirty, we start with the other part of the sub fire station. So if I get done, I can get over to that this meeting. But okay. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So you're saying maybe combine efforts as far as can, if we have to prep it, let's do it toward the parking lot. Right yeah. If, they're actually going gonna, to have a discussion uh, in their um, agenda about taking down had this building over here or what use it will be. And, and they're talking about doing the library over there too. So they want to know what we're going to do with this Russell School. So that's next on their agenda to talk about that. Okay and the parking that was recommended before there. Okay. Don't worry, we're checking these buildings off your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. One at a time. Well, time. It's, it's, I think it's good for yeah. the public to talk about and get yeah. this out there. And yeah. yeah, and so my, that's my question was, could we do anything if we want to put in a gravel parking lot, whatever, for the library construction? Mm -hmm. Could that maybe be paved at a future date and is then our lot over here and mm -hmm. yep. uh, combine those efforts? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there's anything else in the library, unless anybody else knows anything there. Do you have any updates on the fire substation? I won't have anything. They just had a general contractor meeting this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, they were prepping the site up north. They haven't started digging or doing anything else. They've mowed it, um, and that's about it up there. So next okay. week I'll have more. Okay. Um, the senior center is moving forward. We did the... Um, water tie-in last last week was it last week two weeks ago two weeks ago um that went that went well it you know installed that tea overnight um we have the uh, asbestos containing material on middle street that we need to abate so we have a got a change order here tonight for us to vote on um, it's a, it's quoted right now for $80,132.69. That is for three days of abatement work. We're hoping it's less than this. Uh, however, with the unknowns of not knowing the extents of that material there, this is kind of our best stab. Um, so... Uh, right now, this would be to approve this amount for the change, but we're, like I said, we're hoping it's less. Motion to approve. Second. Hang on. Hang on. Go ahead. Did you have to call the insurance company? Find out. I have called into the insurance company. Uh, I don't have an answer for you on that question. The question is whether the uh, property insurance yeah. will cover this. Uh, fairly certain that it will not. Yeah, uh, but I will. Uh, I will have an answer. And that's something we may be able to uh, be reimbursed for it down the line if, if, and they will in fact cover it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. insurance company pays for oil leaks and stuff like that. So the only you know, it, it's it's an unknown. It's not like we put it there. You know. Yeah, and we'd like to start working on this as soon as possible. Between this issue and the issue with the water line 
tie-in not being as straightforward as they thought yeah. you know this is pushing the project out and does we're just trying to get all the site work done to pave it in time yeah. um, and trying to get this done as soon as possible is is trying to race that clock against that yeah. clock so this was discovered when they were trying to do the utility tie-ins right this was the storm water, water drainage, drainage pipe the overflow drain yeah and so has this pushed back anything on the site really so far or are they just continuing it on and waiting for this until later on it's or? compounding so the problem is is that this was supposed to be done we were supposed to have that site work done mm -hmm. but now materials are starting to arrive for the building yeah. without this being done it's and a tight site so it's like trying now it's a chess game of moving things around to be able to do this while trying to build the building at the same time and getting that stuff in. So it has definitely complicated things. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, if, um, on the parking issue that we voted on last time to authorize the use of Russell School for contractor parking. Um, if there's anything that we need to do as far as material storage, anything like that, that will help move things along, I don't have a problem with putting there as long as they put up fencing to obscure that from the public view. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that will speed the project along and avoid delays, then I don't have a project with that. All right. But it will have to be fenced in. Yeah, I yeah. just don't want it yeah. like we had with ETNL with all kinds of just junk piled up there last right. time around. Right. So. Right. I don't know how the rest of the board feels about it. Mm -hmm. If we can save some money that way, then we'll sure. How does the rest of the board feel about that? All right. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to. I was. Oh, we know I was, we're limited over there. So. I was just asking them for a little bit of a plan mm -hmm. before we voted on it, so that um, DPW was well aware of what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. and if they have an idea how much excess mold they're going to have, they can probably bring that to the highway garage and relieve some of that pile. Over, over it. Over at the site, yeah. The senior site. You need to truck it and then truck it back at the end. Time. Yeah, if they need to. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think we could do something over there. It's just how many cars are they going to have? How many cars can we fit there? And well, I, I was talking about on the, not against Metal Street, I was talking about closer to Russell School where the kind of ETNL had their piles of stuff and their equipment last time. Yeah, yeah. Where if we have to store stuff, uh, as long as the fire chief's okay with where it's stored in the DPW, then let's let them store it and get it off their site and so they can move it along, that's all. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, we're limited down DPW too, but I mean, if, if the good material that we would be taking the excess of anyway, we, we do have room for that there. Yeah, I think they want to use some of, they're, they're thinking that most of the loan that's there, they're going to use all right. in putting the site back together, but... <clears throat> Oh, so you were saying for the senior center they could stage some stuff right over because there. if stuff's arriving now they don't have room to put it because mm. of the delays with the asbestos then okay tell them to put up some of the construction fence with that netting that you can't see through so mm -hmm. that way at least mm -hmm. people people on middle street and route nine aren't looking at trash piles or piles of equipment and stuff uh, okay and then let them move along once i misunderstood yeah. i thought you were talking for parking oh no no yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. equipment mm -hmm. materials whatever they need to do is just to keep things moving yeah, I mean, we can offer that to them if that, that's something they want to do. I don't I'll, I'll talk to the two OPMs about that Yeah, tomorrow. I can let Phil know. Okay. I guess my, my hope would be that it would be a temporary storage as well, uh, just until we can catch up with the asbestos removal and things like mm -hmm. that. I don't want to see it there for a year. Yeah, the, the problem is going to be is that right. as, you know, as soon as the library project gets going, we're going to need parking. Yeah, the so, well, as soon as the demolition starts, that's going to yeah. be good. Yeah. Oh, uh, John, the time lapse camera. Do you want to say something about that real quick? Sure. We're on um, the subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I be on camera? Sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's somewhere over here. So we just so we bought a cheap uh, time lapse camera, which is a camera. Uh, that basically it snaps a picture every interval that you set. So you set it to, for example, I'm probably going to set it to to, sh to shoot between like 7 a.m. and 12 a.m. Maybe 7 a.m. and 7 a.m. and one or two, 
during the time when they're working. And it'll shoot every probably five seconds. And then it basically uh, operates for a really long time without any battery, <coughs> uh, without changing the batteries. They last for 78 days. So we have to go out there every so often and change the double A's. And um, <coughs> it's going to be cool because we're going to put it on the pole just outside of the site. It's it's pole. It's a utility pole that's actually uh, in the Legion parking lot, on the very corner of the site. Gets the whole site. My idea was to put it on a tree, kind of facing the building. And Phil was like, I think you should put it on this this pole. It'd be better get a better view of the whole site, and we'll get to see the thing going up from the ground up. And then we'll get to use the same camera for either the demolition of this of the Hooker School or the raising of the new library, or both. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. both. Yeah, if we could definitely, so, definitely do it. 200 both. bucks, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 It's a great thing. Good investment. Yeah, it was a good investment. Yeah. There's yeah. companies that are offering to do that service for people that are building buildings for a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. this will be a fine thing, and we'll be able to create a cool video when we're done, and mm -hmm. we're excited about that. Oh, we nice. also did some filming of the, uh, had the common thing the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah, I heard I'm you. ending it up and putting together a little short thing. You weren't there. I know. Yeah, that's your mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom and my wife's best friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, so that's about it. I'm going to put it up tomorrow. Oh, great. Okay. Got Perfect. The, great. Got the camera map off the wall. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So nice. we're all set. Great. great. Yeah, thanks, John. Thank you. Sounds Look good. forward to it. Yeah. All right. Um, for old business is appointments. So we have our last meeting. We had uh, some things that looked missing in the appointment list, but I think there was some confusion versus who needs to be appointed. The list was more renewing appointments, not as much who is all on those committees. So I don't know, Jennifer, if you have anything to that, say. That is correct. Yeah. Um, how I created the appointment list was just the people who were renewing or had submitted a letter, which was also included, um, asking to be appointed to a committee. So it had their committee name, the term of that committee appointment, and then the people that needed to be renewed. And I'm sorry I wasn't here to explain what that was, um, but I will say that I did leave off two appointments that I am asking you to make tonight. They are included in the list, and it is um, Susan Blatsky, as the parking clerk, I'm asking you to appoint her for term, um, to the end of her election term, electoral term. And um, also Chris Okafer is the moth superintendent and tree warden. I'm asking you to make his for term as well, for the term of his contract. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I went ahead and left the whole appointment sheet as it was. I just added those two on because I didn't, I was unclear if we needed to revote or not. I thought this was the safest way just to make sure we got everybody. I will say that I will probably be back next week with some changes because I have received some notices from people asking to be asking to be removed from the list and they no longer wish to serve on committees. Okay. And do we have a list of everybody that's on the commi committees? I did not attach that. I did not. Okay. Know. What it um, it does exist. Mm -hmm. I just. No. You'll find it in your annual report. Oh, yeah, the annual report. Yes. Yep. Um, but keep in mind that's 2018. Anybody that's been appointed since January 1st of that year is not in it, of this year is not in it for the 2018 report. Exactly, yeah, that was one thing I was saying. Um, but uh, they should be on this, correct? If they were just appointed in January of, since, from January to yeah. now, no, they will not be on this list. No, they won't be, okay. No, this is only people whose terms <coughs> expired January 30th, 2019. Okay. And okay. And new That's why and so and new Mr. Kusha is not on here yeah. because Matt, he's not up for re-election. He, he's right. smack dad in the yeah. middle, middle of his three-year term. I, I would not leave Matt off. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. I know I know Matt's very active in the Agricultural Commission, um, I promise. Um, but there will be some changes coming. Mm -hmm. And I'll also have a list, I'm hoping by next week, for that, of all the vacancies. <laughs> Yeah, and also, I was just going to say, if we can get the vacancies and keep announcing them, mm -hmm. hopefully okay. we can get some folks from the community to fill them. Post it on the um, Access Channel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'll put it on the web page as soon as you'll have it. Yeah, David can post it on his uh, networks. <laughs> All right. Okay. So make a motion so. to accept the appointments before us. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
the eye with the exception of shade tree and uh, municipal building. I have to abstain from those two. Mm -hmm. I should abstain from cultural council and I think that's it. <coughs> okay. Uh, we, we went through that. Oh, she is up. We yeah, for sure ourselves does. for sewer commissioner, water commissioner, anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's and, true. Uh, and I think, according to Boston, we can vote, vote for these positions at this time. When we're appointing. When, when, we are, when we're appointing everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, last thing here is our town administrator report. David, I don't know if you want to take us Certainly. through um, anything we haven't covered. <laughs> Have been covered. Have been covered. Okay. Have not. <laughs> Make it short, in other words. <coughs> okay, compensation classification plan is coming in for a landing. We're meeting next Tuesday. The department heads and Mr. Jacobs will meet with uh, the select board to finish this whole project off. Um, a Route 9 sidewalk project. This uh, project is now complete. Uh, Mass DOT agreed on June 25th, 2019. We wrote it down that Mass DOT will maintain and plow their sidewalks for this project and for the future projects. For the entire length of Route 9 or just the new sidewalks? They, they said that they will take care of their sidewalks in their project area, which includes... What? What date was that? June 25th? June 25th, 2019. And it was at the uh, uh, stakeholders meeting? Yep. It Held was, at the DOT at offices. It was at both. It oh, they sent it at the other one too? They sent it at the DOT office. <coughs> yeah. Well, at the DOT office, I asked that question yeah. and they, yeah. they followed up. But yeah, I don't uh, know if they said anything. About I also meeting. checked in with uh, KP Law on the issue of uh, town's liability and uh, they don't like dealing with hypotheticals, but they said in general the town would not be uh, on the liability hook if we did not plow. Excellent. Any of them? Our own or state? Uh, our own different from the state. Okay. So, right. so if we don't maintain the state, we're not liable for it. That's what they tell me. Okay. All right. Uh, just skipping over things that we've heard. <coughs> Interdirectional flushing. This project has been put on hold for the season to allow for seasonal high summer uh, seasonal use of the water lines and we'll start this project back up in September. And that those results will be uh, used for the next capital improvement plan for water infrastructure. OSHA update, we're going to submit a request for the de de Department of Labor Standards to do a, uh, uh, an evaluation of the town in order to get out in front of this issue so that uh, we're going to come in, they're going to take, they're going to come in, they're going to take a look at our worker safety and workplace safety. Obviously, these are very high priorities. And if there are any deficiencies, they'll let us know. But the main thing is, is that we will not be subject to enforcement because we're complying on our own. When are they coming? They're, uh, do we have a date I they're coming in? So I've submitted, I'm submitting a letter and I don't have a date. Okay. Here. They've been here already. So. Yeah. But they're, yeah, they said that they're, they're, they're going to make dates to come back yeah. at our request. Mm -hmm. Elementary school pavilion, is, that project is on uh, happening again. They're working on the roof. This project is commenced after a hiatus. Affordable housing DLT study grant, we met with the planning board the last time. It didn't look like they wanted to be really involved in this, so I talked to PVPC and said, please proceed this with this project as if it were a select board project, so that's going to move forward. Have you got any response back from them? They were at the meeting on some of the issues we ask questions on? No, I don't have I don't have the answers for that. Although I did follow up on some intriguing discussion about um, funding. There were some grant programs that they were talking about that I uh, didn't know about, so I told them I was much more interested <coughs> in knowing about what they were, how much money we're talking about, how do we apply. Okay. Um, is that block grant that they were talking about at District 2, is that part of Pioneer Valley planning or is that just the state? That, that would be state. That was just the state. It's okay. federal money that's administered by the state. Okay. That's what it sounded to me, but I'm just double checking. Yeah. Um, all right, we got the, uh, the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant for $15,000, so we're up and running on that project. 
Hadley Kids uh, Incorporated. The transfer has been requested by the school department, so that project is now substantially complete. Stormwater update, uh, we have uh, worked on compliance for this particular fiscal year for the MS4 <coughs> permit. Uh, the, um, um, the required information about MS4 is now posted on the Hadley DPW webpage, which includes Hadley's illicit discharge and detection elimination plan. The protecting water quality from urban runoff uh, uh, brochure from the US EPA stormwater brochure, stormwater management plan. In addition, the town is performing street sweeping and catch, ben, catch basin cleaning as required by MS4. So we're now entering into the phase of MS4 where it's going to be costing us a little bit more in terms of operational costs. We have that money set aside and we're still <coughs> partnering with PVPC as for a regional approach that will save us money. And we have some bylaws coming up in the special town meeting for MS4? Is that related to these things? Right. So we're required at the October 24th special town meeting to pass both general bylaws as well as zoning bylaws having to do with stormwater management. So uh, PVPC is working with the planning board for that. We had a brief discussion about that at the department head meeting today. So that's moving forward in a good course. Okay. Uh, we had that stakeholders meeting on June 25th about the various mass DOT projects. One, the Damon Road intersection, uh, two, the Bay Road Bridge replacement, and the Route 9 widening project. On uh, page <coughs> six of my report, you'll find the timeline for these projects. There's a considerable overlap between the Bay Road Bridge replacement and the Route 9 widening project, which would greatly affect or have a, uh, we would expect that it would have a great effect upon traffic flow east and west along Bay Road and Route 9. So we've asked Mass <coughs> DOT to push the Bay Road bridge replacement off until after Route 9 widening. They seem to be open to that, but uh, we don't have any definitive answers right now. Mass Works grant, okay, so we're looking at a Mass Works uh, grant application. And the question is whether if uh, this is a three year program, you can apply once every three years. And uh, the, uh, if we apply this year, will that put us in a bad position to apply for the Route 9 widening project? Chris Okafor, DPW director, and I sat down planned it out. And we think, although it's going to be tight, I think it's doable. So we're going to apply for a MassWorks grant for improvements for the West Street Common and environs. Uh, <coughs> bring that in front of the select board on your uh, meeting in August for the grant deadline to have you take a formal vote on that. But we think that will put us in a good position for applying again in three years for the water and sewer infrastructure upgrades on the Route 9 project. Um, Revenues look good. Expenses have come back under control through May. I did some <coughs> projections for June, and there's nothing there that uh, makes my hair stand on end. So uh, the FY 2020 budget, the conference committee is still meeting, uh, and I hope that they will come out of conference uh, soon, and we'll find out uh, what our final state aid is all about. We talked about the bond rating. Um, these FY 2019 audit is going to start soon, July 24th to the 25th will be the prelimin preliminary site visit. October 7th to the 11th will be the main site visit. And <coughs> our goal is to complete that audit earlier than the prior years. Um, we're also completing on July 31st the the updated OPEB actuarial analysis, and uh, we're going to be meeting with our OPEB actuarial in August in order to um, uh, plot the, the way forward for managing our unfunded OPEB liability in the future. Um, July 13th, the Residential Electricity Aggregation Program opt-out. Opt uh, get your cards in the mail if you're opting out. 
July 31st, uh, OPEB actuarial report due August 7th, capital budgets are due August 28th, SWOT analyses are due September 4th, special town meeting articles are due October 9th, we post the special town meeting warrant, the 17th we hold the public forum, and the 24th of October is the, the main show. And I should also include next week uh, we're going to be uh, talking about select board goals and objectives. So that will come up on the 17th. That will probably be a uh, topic that will take a meeting or two. And then uh, one other thing on there, too, is the August 9th CPA application deadline. Yeah. Just add that. Any questions? No. Nope. Good. All right. Any uh, announcements? I have one. Uh, <coughs> Code Red doesn't exist anymore, so the new system is Nixle. Uh, if you haven't already signed up, you can text Hadley to 888-777, and it'll walk you through the process of signing it up, but it's very easy. Um, and that's what the community will be using for emergency notifications as well as informational notifications in the future. So uh, get signed up. We've got... Um, what do you text? Hadley to the number 888 777. Or you can go to the Hadley, like Hadley website and, uh, and, and opt in that way. There you go. Looks like you can also type in your text, your zip code. Yep. There's all kinds okay. of ways. Yeah. So it's easy, so there's not a single person in town that shouldn't be in the know. Okay. <laughs> zip code. Find some sucker to show me. <laughs> give me your phone, Joyce. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. Any other announcements? Uh, I just have a few. Uh, we haven't been here for a couple of weeks, um, so I'd like to send out condolences to a few families from the select board. Uh, the family of Michaeline Martin. Uh, she worked for a number of years in our uh, school department. Irene Russell, um, her husband lived in North Hadley and um, had one son and she has several grandchildren. John Harper lived in North Hadley and has a, uh, his family, so we send our condolences to them. And then Eugene Newman uh, and his wife uh, Christine, we send our condolences to her also. Um, so, from our select board. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't have any announcements right now. Okay, um, I think we've covered everything, so a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We've got a couple of things to sign this for Christmas. Thank you.